The year was 1958, and physicist William Higginbotham was bored of entertaining visitors at the Brookhaven National Laboratory, which, fun fact, is owned today by the U.S. Department of Energy? Anyway, on a search to cure his boredom, Higginbotham found a computer at Brookhaven that could estimate trajectories of ballistic missiles. And from that, he decided to use it to make a game about, out of all things, tennis. This would go on to be called Tennis for Two, one of the first video games ever, where players twist a knob to hit a ball back and forth using an oscilloscope, a machine that transforms different voltage levels into a visible light. Even though the game was a hit with visitors, it was technically owned by the government, so it never got a commercial release. But that wouldn't stop other game companies from getting their hands into this stuff. The Magnavox Odyssey used templates with these light games in 1972. The game has a huge resemblance to Pong, which Atari also released that same year. And from there, well, the rest is history. Now here's where things get interesting. Fast forward a few decades, and games like these still have a following. The handheld you're seeing right now is the Mega Junior RGB, an 8x8 LED matrix display that you can program games for. It's 75 bucks and comes with this game, Attack of the Cherry Tomatoes. Yeah, you see, those are, those are tomatoes. They're a lot different than I remember them being. And a whole list of games the community made for it. It may seem like just thoughts, but there's a whole lot more going on here. In 2007, a director at WayForward Technologies began designing games with a setup just like the Mega Jr. on an 8x8 grid machine. And it was from this hardware that James Montagna and Andrew Lim got together and co-developed .arcade for the Wii U. So today, we're gonna find out how addicting games made of nothing but lights can really be. Welcome to Bars Gamer, where today, we're going to be answering the dot matrix. Okay, I actually don't know what the matrix is. I've, I've not seen the movies, so this joke was a complete failure. We're going to be playing the three light games that make up Dot Arcade. Mr. Snake, Dodge Club, and Rally Driver. Now, they may all have the same constraint being put on a small grid and everything, but today, I'm going to show you how different they really are, based on one of the ancestors of video games. Let's get started. <laughs> so the first game on our list, Mr. Snake, is, well, you guessed it, a variation of Snake, a game that's been on just about every device imaginable, including YouTube videos, as a matter of fact. You control a yellow dot that needs to eat green dots to get bigger, while avoiding the blue dots and eventually, yourself. I know, it sounds really bare bones in concept, but there's a lot more going on here, so let me explain what you're looking at. Even though you're stuck on an 8x8 grid, this field loops around, so if you leave one side of the screen, you'll come out the other side. These blue dots come in different formations, a single dot, a T-shaped form kind of like those blocks from Tetris, and a four dot straight line coming down from the top. The rate at which these formations come down varies, but the formations on the side are at least two dot spaces apart, so there is kind of a safe zone. If that wasn't enough, since a line could come from the top, it's usually not a good idea to hang around that side of the screen. But if you're stuck in a tricky situation, don't worry about your whole snake being hit. You only lose if the head you're controlling gets hit. The other dots will just turn white, showing that the blue and yellow dots are overlapping. And on top of that, you got your normal snake mechanics. You can't move backwards, which I guess is kind of obvious since you just run into yourself. So if you're going horizontal, you can only move up or down, and if the snake is vertical, left or right. As I said, eventually you grow larger and start getting in your own way, so you have to avoid yourself, remember the blue dots formations, and move across the screen without running into something else. For such a simple game, it's very demanding if you want to get far in it, and I really like it like that. It's a fun, challenging game to play in short bursts, and gets you really pissed when you mess up and hit the wrong dot. Next on our list is Dodge Club, which is the most simplistic game of the bunch. You're a 2x2 square avoiding another 2x2 square and a 2 dot green line. The longer you last, the higher your score. Sounds way too simple, right? Well, these two enemies have different formations. The green line moves all around the edge of the screen, while Mr. Flashy Square over here, yeah, that's his new name by the way, I didn't read the e-manual, bounces all over the place. The way the square ricochets around the grid keeps changing, so he could move horizontally or vertically, or even at different angles. The best way I found to do this is to just hide in a corner, but you'll have to keep moving once a block comes your way. As the devs intended, you're never really safe. Throw in the fact that it just keeps going faster the longer you last, and you got a game with a decent amount of depth to it. And it's stressful as all hell too. Since you're on that 8x8 grid, you'll often be just one dot away from these enemies when you're moving. Oh, that was close. Half the time I just lose by freaking out and moving in the other direction, where I would have been fine if I just kept going. 
there's definitely some clever game design behind this one. And last on our list is Rally Driver, which I felt was the weakest of the bunch. In this game, you're a two-dot yellow car where you must avoid blue cars as you zip right past them. Starting to see the pattern that blue is bad in all the games? The more cars you pass by, the faster the track goes as you see by the side of the road, I guess. That said, you really have to be careful. These blue cars can shift over one lane as you pass by them, so it's always good to keep your distance. Now the problem I have with Rally Driver is that it's just reflexes. While the other games required a bunch of strategy and guessing where to go next, Rally Driver is just moving one or two spaces away as fast as you can. If there's more variety, like the track shifting around or something, I feel like I'd be compelled to play it more. But in its current form, I only found it fun for like the first few rounds, and I ended up just sticking to the other two games. So yeah, that's Thought Arcade's games. I don't know about you, but the more I learned about these games, the more questions that kept lingering in my mind. Would the games have been more fun if they weren't constrained to just thoughts? I know there's strategy involved in some of them, but is it still too simplistic for its own good? And is there enough replay value to warrant the $5 price tag? Well, let's get straight into the review and try to figure all this out. First up is gameplay, and well, I did have a lot of fun. The complex thinking of Mr. Snake, the stressful trajectory guessing at Dodge Club, and sometimes even Rally Driver's Twitch-based maneuvers, they all came together to be a fun pick up and play compilation. Usually what I'd do is play each game like 15 minutes, put it down and came back to it another day. If you're fine with just looking at dots and don't need crazy things to happen on screen to have fun, it's a great time waster. Unfortunately, I didn't have as much fun with Rally Driver, and these games do wear you out if you're playing for too long at a time. I feel like there could have been some more options or something to switch the game up, but as it stands, I think it's good enough to get a good. Second up is visuals, and you're gonna think I'm crazy here, but I think they nailed it. The game's conversion to a console was really well done. The devs could have easily just put 8 circles on screen, but they made them glow just like the real deal. The flashes on the dots are fantastic indicators of what's happening on screen, and I was never confused as to what was happening. The game was simplistic enough that I knew exactly what each color and specific glow meant the second it showed up. In its rawest form, these are visuals conveying messages to players perfectly. Crazy stuff. And on top of it all, it's fun to play these games on just the gamepad, since it feels like you're carrying one of these devices with you. People could argue that this could be done better for 3DS, or any system for that matter, but there's something about having just one clunky controller with one screen in your hand that makes it feel special. And of course, there's the two arcade cabinets for each game. They look really clean, and for Mr. Snake, they even kind of explain what you're trying to do. It's adorable. Like I said, call me crazy, but I think for what the game set out to do, the visuals are great. Third up is sound, and well, there's not much to talk about here. There's lots of beeps and boops, and they're all great auditory cues, but there's no other music besides the game select modes. Even though these games never have music on the actual devices, this is on a console. Having a few more tracks would have been nice, while you can just turn them off if you want to keep it authentic, you know? I mean, these are way forward devs we're talking about. I would have loved that they got Jake Kaufman, one of their main composers, on board for this. But anyway, as it stands, it's getting an okay for me. Fourth up is length, then I think I got my $5 worth. As I said, the games really could have used the Game B or something, like in those old Game & Watch and Atari games, but in short bursts, I did have a good time. I usually would say there could have been some online leaderboards or achievements or something, but Miiverse has tons of posts with scores, so I think that works fine. At any higher price, I'd be a lot less lenient, but for 5 bucks, I'm gonna go ahead and give this an okay. Oh man, that arcade really left me with mixed emotions. I had fun playing it, and it was really an authentic experience for people into those Dot Matrix games. These were the kind of games that started it all, and it was interesting to see what the devs could do with it. But for me, I still have this, you know, empty feeling inside playing it. Putting my own music on while playing it really helped, but for a while, I really couldn't put my finger on why I felt this way. After a lot of thought though, I think it's that gaming has advanced so much since Tennis for Two. The graphics, the gameplay, the scope of games are just all evolving at an alarming pace. So when I see a game like Dot Arcade, a title that strips all of our advances away and expands on the simplest approach possible, it makes sense that I feel kind of off playing it. But at the same time, it shows us that even with a gigantic constraint, devs can still make video games on nearly anything yet still keep it fun. Limitations on the game can be a roadblock, but in the end, with enough time and effort, you can still make something enjoyable. And in a day and age where these constraints are always being pushed to their limits, to the point where technical problems are ever increasing, this is a point that should always be remembered. 
I'm grateful to the devs of Dot .arcade to show me this, and to find all these cool light devices in the process. But at the end of the day, this concept could have been executed a bit better, and I feel like the game could be a lot more fleshed out. So Dot .arcade's getting an okay for me, and while I recommend it to people who want a fun, pick up and play experience, or enjoy these kinds of light games, I think there's a huge amount of potential here if the devs decide to make a sequel. Oh man, you know, I can't help but feel I forgot something here. <laughs> That's right, the THE MANUAL! Okay, I'm curious, am I missing some sort of plot line here? Okay, here we are. Mr. Snake... Mr. Snake, become a galactic snake fat rider and gobble up as many cosmic gem fruits as you can. Dodge Club, put a show as you guide your dancer around the red-hot disco floor of danger. Oh. Rally driver, step into the driver's seat of the fastest formula D racer on the road. I need to work on my imagination skills. Oh, is it backwards? <laughs> no!